Hi friends. Now I am going to discuss about the incomplete dominance and co-dominance. Before describing this, I am going some reviewing part, which I discussed earlier video. This is cell nucleus chromosome DNA double helix. So we know that the space uh, between genes and uh, genes. This is a mutant alley normal alley genes chromosomes which are required in this section. So in the previous uh, video we discussed about the Mendel's principle. Genes are past uh, parents, offspring get uh, one alley from each parent. During a meiosis, the alleys for a gene segregation from each other. During meiosis, genes independently assort with each other. This is the incomplete uh, dominance and codominance. It uh, is an uh, uh, exception to Mendel's principle. That's why I told to remember the Mendel's principle first. After that, you comes to the incomplete dominance and codominance, the exception to Mendel's principle. Sometimes there is no dominant or recessive gene, or the trait is controlled by many alleles or genes. Incomplete dominance or partial dominance or semi dominance is a condition when neither alley is dominant over the other. The condition is recognized by the heterozygotes expressing an intermediate phenotype relative to the parental phenotypes. For example, in 4 o'clock plants, Mirabilis jalapa, when the red flowers, flowered plant is crossed with the white one, pink flowered F1 plants obtain. If pink flower F1 plants are crossed, the F2 plants appeared in a phenotype ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 1, having red, pink and white. Here, the parent is red and white. These parents are both true breeding red and white. Big alphabet W referred the red, small w is white. When they are crossed each other, the W and W, the red and white one, after the F1 generation, it, uh, it uh, results in the all pink flowers. That means the genotype all big W and small W and the phenotype all transfer to the pink. After that, when we are going to the F2 generation, then the red, white and pink, it gives the genotype ratio, the 1 is to 2 is to 1 and also the phenotype ratio, 1 is to 2 is to 1, the red, 1 red, 2 pink and 1 white. In this case, the red color producing gene is not completely dominant over the alley producing white color. So, the genotypic and phenotypic ratio is same and equal to 1 is to 2 is to 1. Here, in picture, it uh, shows uh, very clearly. When red and white is crossed, in F1 generation produce the all pink flowers. But in the F2 generation, it produces the red one, one and two pink and one white flowers. Have enough pigment to be red. The flowers don't have any pigment, no color, only have enough pigment to be pink. This is the how the coloring works. Now I come to the codominance. Alice that lack dominant and recessive relationship and 
are both observed phenotypically to same degree are called co-dominant. So the phenotypic effect of each alley is observed in the heterozygous condition. The heterozygous genotype gives rise to a phenotype distinctly defined from their of the homozygous genotype. Since one alley is not completely dominant over the other alley and both traits appear together, we use two dominant capital vector to represent the alleys. The example, the alleys governing the M and blood group in human are examples of codominant alleys. M and blood group is characterized by a certain type of glycoprotein on the surface of the RBCs. There are two forms M and M. Designated is L. LM, LM is equals to M. LN, LN is equals to N. The LM, LN is equals to MN type. Why types of offspring would be produced from a cross of a homozygous M type with an MN type? The genotypic ratio turns to the LMLM is 2 and the LMLN turns to 2. It means the 1 is to 1, the MM is to MN genotypic ratio and phenotypic ratio also 1M blood type and 1MN blood type. In this case, genotype and the phenotype ratio remains same. This lecture may be helpful to you. Thank you.